This is the review of the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. Here is the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. And uh, this is probably one of the best kits I've ever built. It is, I would say, not just a mini perfect grade, but a mini perfect grade extreme, just because of the inner frame itself. If you saw my other set of videos on just the build of the inner frame, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's so detailed. There's so much color separation just on the inner frame. And all that, and basically it's just the, you know, like the true gold, whoop, the true gold that shows through in most places. There's a couple places where you can see the other parts. But it just, the, the, the frame just adds so much to this. That's all the gold pieces and many of the, uh, the, the etched piece of, um, pieces and stuff like that, like here. And I mean, it's, ju it's just breathtaking. It really is. Um, and it wasn't really all that complicated a, a piece. I mean, there are a lot of pieces and, um, you know, so there's a lot to deal with, but the instructions are very well written. The experience of putting this together, I never felt like I was in the woods where I couldn't figure out where things were going to be placed or things didn't feel like they didn't fit together. Everything was snug. You didn't have to be as precise with every piece like I had to do with other ones like real grades where, you know, I have to align the entire piece before I can fit even a small piece in. This went together beautifully. It's this rock solid, very tight model. And I mean, this here is the mobile suit, but just the, if, if you just take a look at the, the actual backpack, I mean, these are the wings and this is just absolutely remarkable as well. I mean, there was <laughs> the number of pieces that went into building this was more than some of the HGs that I've put together by far. I mean, I'm talking some of the more complicated HGs, but, but once again, every, there were a lot of pieces to deal with, but the instructions were super well written and it went together very, very easily, very intuitively, in fact. Um, there were very few places where it didn't make sense. So, and, and there's just all this detail. You know, you've got the, you know, you've got your, your gold pieces sticking out all over the place. You've got, you know, some red vents here. You know, just the blue and the black. You know, I'll get more into this with the articulation, but these separate. And, I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. I can't say enough about this. Now, anybody that wants to build this, I would highly recommend it. Maybe do a couple 100 scale um, pieces first. Doesn't necessarily have to be a master grade or anything like that. You could do a full mechanics. It's just so that you can get used to working with the larger pieces and, you know, a lot of ways that the things go together. And the fact that this has no... um poly caps or anything like that. It's all plastic on plastic. At least you get an idea on how those things go together before tackling this, but you don't have to do many. As long as you've built, you know, two, maybe one or two or three models ahead of time, you can jump right into this. Don't, don't be intimidated by it because it can definitely look intimidating. So let's just get on to the rest of the review. Now, this is not quite straight out of the box. Um, it does have the various color correcting or slash 3D metallic decals, the plastic decals on it, and the there's a number of etched um, metallic uh, um, stickers as well. One thing to point out is that in the instructions, it, call, it calls the plastic ones, kind of like the thicker plastic type stickers, as 3D, metallic 3D but they're really plastic, and then they call the metallic pieces just etch stickers. So they're on there as well in various pieces. But this has also been panel lined. There's a lot of panel line detail on this, especially underneath the pieces. Now, a lot of that detail doesn't show, but it's it's 
it's it's amazing how much detail is underneath the pieces, not just on top. Mm-hmm. And this does have the water slide decals applied that came with the kit. Since the inner frame on this kit was is so incredible, um, I wanted to put an, an independent section all its own in the review. So this is the inner frame for the Master Grade Extreme Strike Freedom Gundam. And to say that this is detailed is an understatement. This is so amazingly detailed and color separated. I just wanted to point out a few things. Now, since this is a, a true inner frame, all the articulation is handled by the inner frame pretty much, except for obviously the backpack and probably some side skirting stuff. So uh, the articulation will wait for the regular review once I get all the external stuff on here and stuff like that. But the, the color separation on this is absolutely amazing. Um, if you look here at the side here, there are three different, if you just, even if you ignore the fact that there's the metal etched there with the silver there, the, we've got the shiny gold, we've got kind of a duller bronze, then this kind of not quite shiny, but not quite dull, slightly darker bronze piece, all in this small little area to give detail. Which is, I mean, and this is happening all over this model. I mean, look, we've got here on the back, just the back skirt here. Forgive me, I'm trying a new uh, camera ang- camera equipment to uh, do better with the reviews so that my hands aren't always in the way and I'm not pointing at something that's off camera. So please bear with me with this. E- even this back skirt, I mean, there are... Once again, there are there are three different colors just on this that are showing just to give the texture and the color separation that makes it pop. Other things I wanted to point out, um, which aren't are, are kind of part of the articulation, but I just wanted to point them out because they may not be as apparent once the armor is on. So here in the waist. We've got these two little pieces here. And when I move the waist, those shift as well. When I, when I tilt the waist, those pieces shift as well. Now, there's going to be outer armor on those. So when this has the outer armor, it's going to look great when you tilt the waist because those are going to go up and down. Um, you know, th- th- right here for the claws, they they move slightly right here. Another part I wanted to point out is that here at the ankle, you've got these little pieces here that when you move the ankle left and right, those slide up. There's one on the inside too of each leg, outside and inside, and those slide up and down. So whatever piece of armor is attached to that is going to look really cool when this is uh, when it's all together. And that's all. I mean, all that is just controlled here on the inner frame, and just I mean, just the little details, and you know, probably many of these details won't even show once all the armor is on, but they took the time to do it. I mean, right here, there's all those, that detail up here, what you're never going to see, because that's where the waist attaches. Um, it's, it's just an amazing, amazing, you know, there's a little bit here where, let's see here, let me get it into view. When you, when you crunch the abs, this part moves. Back and forth. There's just this little piece here that also moves to a bit. I mean, there's just so much thought and design went into this. I just, I just had to cover this as a separate part of the review 
because I was just blown away. And I mean, this was so much fun to put together, even though it was just the part that isn't going to show as much of the model. Can't wait to get the armor and the backpack on this thing. But that's the inner frame. So we'll move on to the rest. Okay, let's first take a look at the accessories. And I've got right here, we come, it comes with uh, four sets of hands. We've got our fist hands, which happen to be on it. I just noticed I have the thumbs backwards, so I've got them on the wrong hand. But it's got the, the fists here that don't hold anything. They're just fists. Then we've got the gripping hands, and each of them, there's a right and a left. Each is a trigger finger, so they're for gripping the, the rifles, which I'll show in a little bit. There is the splayed hands. And then these are the highly articulated hands. These are similar to the real grade hands, but they are much more articulated. Now, the thumb is in place because it's held in there by the backing of the hand, and I was hoping the same thing would happen with the fingers, but it doesn't. Each of these has a little ball joint. If you move them just a little bit too far, they're going to pop out. And But this has articulation in each of the joints, so where it attaches to the hand here in the middle where you would have your normal finger joint and then the tip. So it, it can go like that. But it's but it they're a little bit stiff, so you know once you start playing around with them then they'll get less stiff. But if you do move the this part, if you try to kind of go straight across, that's when it's gonna the ball joint's gonna pop out. Now, the unfortunate thing is these hands are the only things that can hold on to the bean sabers. You can't hold on to them with the gripping hands because these are for the guns and they, this is too wide to fit in the grip. So, you know, I, it, it, it gets tricky. Um, if you look in the instructions, it says that there's a tab that this slot fits into, but the tab on the hand doesn't come up high enough. Oh, I see. Sorry. I just figured out what it was. There is. This must slide up. And that's how it gets held. Okay, that's what I did wrong. There's a tab that just pops up out of the, the palm. You can fit it right in there into there and that'll hold it in place and then you just have to maneuver the the um the, the, the fingers don't have to hold on to it the, the tab and the palm is going to hold on to them so that's better than what i was trying to do so the nice thing about these you know it has its basic it's got the red uh beams beam effects they go in like most other ones where it's just a round peg so it goes in you got two of them and you can do a double-headed one by just connecting them, the ends together, just like that. And then you can have them both out. We've got two guns. These guns are almost completely identical, except for the end here. One has... Oh, got one upside down. <laughs> so the, the only difference is the back here where this one has almost like a, what looks like a reloading feature or, you know, shows the, the, um, shows the bullets and such that would be in there. And this one doesn't. This has this thing that has a, a lens in there so it can be used as a sight, but it has to go to the side. The reason why is that you can make this into a master gun, a big gun, by putting the barrel of this one into the back here. It'll fit right in. And then you have the long gun, and you've got the handles that come down. Now, in the hand here, this, this fits together like a normal one where you just take off the finger part. You put the weapon in the back, in the hand grip here. And there's a peg right there, and that goes into the hole right there. And it holds on to it beautifully. It's very easy once you get used to the angle that it has to be at. And then you just snap it on. And 
and it's got the Oh, I've got it backwards, that's why. I'm wondering why this wasn't going on. I had it backwards. So it goes right in there. It's got the, the trigger finger, and you can hold on to that right like that. And on the on the weapons, these pull out to give you a little bit more length. This also does it for this one as well. So they're both pretty much exactly the same, except for just slightly different in the back because of the way that they have to fit together. Another accessory that comes is we've got two um, power shields, and these fit on pretty well by this piece right... Where is it? There we go. Oh, <laughs> the head, the, the, head, the, the gold um, fin comes off from time to time. But this red part will pop off. Nope. Do this other one. Sorry about that. This will just fold up. This will come up and it comes off. This part comes off. And then what you would do is there's a hole right there on the power shield, and that's where this tab right there fits in. And then this peg right here just slides in where it was before, except for now you've got the power shield attached. And then that happens on both sides. And you got the power shield there. You know, you can turn it a little bit, but it really doesn't want to turn. It just wants to stay just kind of oriented like that on the on the uh, the arm. There are a few pieces that come off as I'm posing it and stuff like that, but it's not too bad. I might wind up gluing them on. Um, I haven't quite done it yet because it, it just doesn't feel right. <laughs> but those pieces that I'm thinking of gluing on don't move, so it's not going to... Um, affect anything. So, and of course, you know, that we've got our our hip rail guns like you would on just about any other uh, freedom style Gundam out there. So, and the other accessory that comes with it, which isn't really, con really an accessory, but it does come with its own stand, and, it, and it's like a type, I think it's type 4, which is the larger base and much very sturdy. And this is just a connector to attach it to the backpack to hold it in. So it's very sturdy, and you can it has a lot of adjustments on it and stuff like that, so you can pretty much pose it any way you want. Now another nice thing that they have is they do have these figure pieces right here. Uh, it's Ray, and um, I think it's Ray. I can't quite remember. And then the main female character there. And then they also have a pilot figure, which I would normally have painted up and put in. The reason why I haven't is because there's no way to access the pilot area without taking the entire chest apart. So, you'll never see the pilot, so I didn't put him in there. But there is a place to snap him in there. I'm hoping that maybe as I move it around and stuff like that, I can figure out how to get into that compartment. But th I haven't seen any way to do it yet. Um, so, I just chose not to put him in there. 
So that's it for the accessories. It's time to take a look at the articulation. So there is a lot of typical articulation, like the head can turn all the way it can turn. Not quite all the way around, but it does get a good left and right. It can go bend forward, it can bend back. There's a number of articulation points for the head. There's a ball joint that goes into the head. And then the neck has a, a pivot joint, you know, uh, and, and then also in the back here, it can lift up a little bit right there in the back. So it gives a little bit more of a front bend looking down type thing. So it can look pretty far down. The arms. You know, this, these can, the, the shoulder bits can move out of the way. These on the shoulders, there's one in the front and back of each shoulder. They, they pivot like wings going out. The arm can come all the way up at about a 90 degree angle. The arm also has this little guy here that can also move independently. So that can go up or down. It can twist at the top, which is nice. It also has the joint that allows it. You can move the arm all the way around. Just keep in mind that the shoulders are basically hooked on there by just put the peg of the arm goes through a little flap that holds the shoulders on. Now, this is much better than many other ones that I've worked with in the past, where just any movement, say like the real grade um, RX-78-2, just doesn't stay on there because the peg isn't long enough. This seeds in, and it, you can kind of almost hear a snap or feel a snap, really, when you put it in. This has a double-jointed elbow, which allows it to go all the way up. It has this little wrist, has this, this little wrist thing right here that can go all the way around. It is a little bit stiff, but that's okay because this is brand new. You don't want it too loose. The hands have a typical ball joint. And that's what most of them have is the ball joint. So they can do some tilt, some tilting and then just twist all the way around. Now, the exception to that is that the splayed hand also has a hinge joint right there where it goes in. So you get a lot more forward and back movement of the wrist. You know, it also has the, the ball joint to go in. Now, one neat thing about the shoulders, each, both sides have this, is that this can move up and it reveals the thrusters underneath and they separate somewhat. Let me just get a better angle for you guys. There we go. So that, that's cool. And that happens on both sides. That is typical of some of the ones that have some of the mobile suits that have the more elaborate. And the movement's the same on both arms. And I, I've got to say, one thing that's really nice about putting this model together is that with, with some exceptions on the left and right arm, because they had to do the forearm a little bit differently, but a lot of the pieces for both the right and left arm and the right and left leg are the exact same pieces are not even mirrored of each other. They're exactly the same. So when putting it together, you don't have to worry so much about, oh, am I putting it on the left or the right leg or right, left or right arm? Cause it really doesn't matter in the, in many cases. Of course, that means that, you know, the, the, uh, the instructions show a lot of, times two, or when you get to the backpack, times four and times eight, because you're just putting the same thing together many, many times. So, um, in the chest, 
you can crunch, you, you do a nice ab crunch. Because it, Okay. <laughs> it is very stiff. So it looks like it's fragile, but it's really not. Because nothing's broken, it's just come off. So it does have this nice little tilt to it. And if you look in the back, it, it does rise up very nicely. The waist can turn all the way around. We have the rail guns, which fold up so that they can be pointed. And, and there is a ball joint and a hinge joint there so you can move them around in whatever angle you want to off the hip. And both sides do the exact same thing. To show the other stuff, I'm just going to take these off for right now, because otherwise they'll be in the way. One neat little thing is there's a lot of movement in the, in the hips. If you can see that right there, just back and forth. And if you can see, you can also, because I'm holding on to the hips now, at the bottom of the waist, it can move. And those little side parts move up and down with it, which is really, really cool. These shift to kind of keep them kind of in the same place, but they shift back and forth, up and down, which is really nice for the articulation. We have our back skirts, and they are on a, just a, a basically a, a, a hit, you know, a, um, a peg joint. So they'll just go up and down. There's a little bit of back and, you know, a little bit of ball joint type movement, but that's just because there's like a hinge joint back there. But one neat thing is that you can separate this to show more of the inner frame. So if you want to go into combat mode, this is probably like a, a destroy mode for the uh, seed, um, seed gun, uh, mobile suits. But that, that has some nice little detail there. The other side does the exact same thing. The front flaps, basically just a peg joint right there. No real, um, ball joint movement. And this also has that one little piece that can stick out to show inner frame right there. If you notice here on the, on the leg, there's a lot of articulation because this part right there folds out and it has a joint that lets it go up and down in various, I mean, just the amount of movement in different places that the movement affects. I mean, you can, you can basically cross the legs, which not a lot of mobile suits allow, if you can see that. So you can do a pirouette with this. Um, it can, you know, it can turn all the way around. The knee is a double joint as well. And there's a lot of separation that happens to show inner frame when you move the, the knee at the knee, which is really, really nice, including just this little piece right here slides back and forth into place. And the nice thing about this, unlike some other things that, especially like, you know, the larger ones that have very complex knee separation, you can pull it back. And then you can just move it forward, and you don't have to worry about what order you do things. There's nothing catching. It's a very smooth movement, no matter which way you're going. It's still tight, so you can keep put your knee, you know, put it wherever you want, but you don't have to worry about things catching like you do with some models. On the, um, we have these little things. There are uh, thrusters back here, and these move a little bit, but not a whole lot. We've got the typical kind of ankle sheath type of armor right here, and they connect back here on a little ball joint, which is typical. However, the amount of detail on this and the amount of color separation on this is not typical. 
this is, I mean, if you, if you want to see how, you know, dedicated they were to the, you know, Master Grade Extreme experience and the color separation and the amount of detail they put in this, there are, there are six pieces that get put together to put this on. Because there is, if you can see in there, there's inner frame in there as well, underneath the white, as well as these detail pieces and stuff like that. So it's, it's amazing. So I'm going to take one of these off just so that I can show you some other movement that happens, which will be difficult to see, I believe, if I keep that on. So the foot has some, doesn't have a whole lot of, of at the ankle front and back. It has some at the ankle joint, but a lot of it is controlled at the, at the toe. The heel doesn't move very much, but the toe has a two part movement. So you can go down and then you can move this for this right here. And that moves really nicely. Now, it also has back and forth movement. And the reason why I wanted to take off that guard is, as you can see, these pieces here on the ankle move up and down. And once again, they move incredibly smoothly. There is no hook. There's no, there's no catching. There's no nothing. It's just, it's moving beautifully. Now, one thing to point out while I've got it here is, oh, sorry, it wasn't on this. The backpack connects here. Now, there's this little piece here, which goes essentially right above the back right there. And then there's that. The, the rectangular kind of slot to put it in. It's a little bit different than normal MGs because there's some grooves that things move in. And I think that's just because this is, this is one heavy backpack. I've got to say this, I mean, once you got it in, it's in and it feels great. It's a little bit tricky to get it in. Got to, this is one of the places where you really do have to line things up. You might have to get certain things out of the way. There we go. But also one thing is because this backpack is so big and so heavy, it's going to be incredibly difficult to get this to stand on its own with the backpack on, no matter how much you try to separate the legs and stuff. This is just super back heavy. So that the stand is nice because you can do whatever pose you want on there and, and everything is rock solid when you're posing it. Nothing shifts or anything like that. But that's how the backpack goes on. And just so I can show the articulation that happens on the backpack, we've got these joints that let it go f forward, some backwards. I'm sorry, th this is forward. This, this is the back of the backpack here where the uh, thrusters are. But what, when it's on the model, you're not going to be able to move it that way. You will be able to move it towards the back. Now also, and th there's a lot more decal detail on the back, because that's the part that's going to be seen. Like it's got this detail, got a little bit more wording on the pieces. Whoops, sorry, my hand was in the way. Got a little bit more wording on the pieces and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, the inner part, there's just a few, you know, it's basically just these, these decals right there on the wing that are on them because they're not going to be seen as easily. So, but th these, each one moves around here on a peg joint. And then this middle part, there's, there's one that will move the one that's between the outer one and this pointy part that moves back and forth. Each of them, the black piece will separate. Don't go too far because it's just a C clamp holding that on. 
See? <laughs> it's just a C clamp holding that on. So those can, and then each of these blue parts can, whoop. Each of these, where is it? Oh, I'm, there we go. These can separate from these black parts there. And you can, it, it basically has a clip. You hear a click when it goes out as far as it can. And when it goes in, there's a click to hold it in place. And that's for every single piece of this. They have all the same articulation for each, all four of these double thin groupings. And there is a little bit of movement right here. There's a, the, the way that they did this is there's a peg that comes out, but then it's on a, a, um, there's another peg that goes through a hole that allows it to go like this inside. Cause basically these two pegs are stacked up on each other inside this little gold, uh, fixture here. So, and like I said, I mean, wherever you put the pieces, they're going to stay because this is absolutely rock solid, and I don't think it's just because it's brand new. Now, it, if you play with it a lot, it will probably loosen up a bit, but I think it'll take quite a while. But, I mean, this is such an amazing piece. I can't imagine, well, I can imagine people wanting to play with it, but I'm just going to put this on a shelf because it's really a show piece. It's not really a toy. I'm mean, just I'm just blown away by this entire build, and it was so much fun. So... I forgot to show how to get this onto the stand. So essentially, the connection for the stand is all through the backpack. So once you've got the stand on the backpack, you just put the backpack on the piece, and it's on the stand, and it's all really sturdy. So how you do that is you have this piece that is the interface. Oops, sorry. You have this piece here, which is the interface. This piece right here is what fits into the square fitting on the base. So in order to put this on, what you do is this piece right here slides down to reveal a peg hole, a rectangular one. And it'll snap and it'll, you'll, you'll hear a little bit of a snap when you know you've got it far enough. And this right here, is what goes into that hole. And you basically just put it in. If, if the backpack is up, you want this to be oriented that way. So that it just slides in. And that's it. And then this goes on. I had it going from the wrong side. And this just goes on from the back. To fit just like. And that's the nice thing about the stand. The stand has so many things where you can move it around. You know, you can move that. You can move the pieces here. And everything has a lever lock, like the really good Bandai stands do so and you can even you know there's a way to push there's an extension and everything like that so it's really beautiful like i said i believe it's the base four that this is that this is so i just wanted to go right back come back on and show how to attach that as you could tell throughout this entire review i absolutely love this piece it was a joy to build. It looks incredible. The amount of detail is just unparalleled to anything else I've ever built. Um, there are a couple of little tiny nitpicky negatives of it. One, there are some pieces that just keep popping off, like the leg flares. It seems that the right leg, the thrusters, 
pieces, which is that there's three pieces that go here, and they keep coming off. I've had to put the golden um, head flares back on multiple times. And as you could tell from the, when I was, you know, doing the articulation, there were some pieces that came off, but those had never come off before. Now, you know, I'd much rather that when manipulating it, that um, the pieces come off than break. So that's good. Um, and like I said, these other pieces that kind of came off a little bit during the manipulation, they never did before, so I'm not going to worry about it. Another place that comes off, especially when you're trying, when I'm trying to move the chest, where was this top part here, these, these two, the black and the red, but not as often. Um, it only happened a couple times and it was specifically when I was doing this, but I might wind up gluing on the head flare and the thrusters in the back. They don't move anyway, so it's not going to impede anything. And I'm just going to put this on a shelf anyway. So that that's a negative. Another, I guess, I guess negative you could say is that the backpack, as impressive as it is, is just so heavy that I could not figure out any pose that would allow this to to stand freely with the backpack on. If anyone out there can get this to stand freely with the backpack on, send me a picture and I will post it everywhere on my social media and, and do a little short to show that it was able to be done and give you credit for it. My email is in the about page of uh, this uh, channel. I, ju I just don't see how it could be done because it's just so back heavy when this is on. I mean, it's beautiful and it looks great on the stand. Uh, I'm not complaining. But that's that's just a little bit of a negative. Um, other than that, I mean, this is just one of the... I, I've said this time and time again, and I know I've already said this in this part of the review as well, but this is absolutely incredible. Um, and, and it was just so easy to build. Um, it, it was not complicated. Um, there's lots of pieces to deal with, but the instructions are very clear. The way that it's split up, on doing the inner frame first, then the backpack, then putting all the armor pieces on, then dealing with the sides, you know, the, the side rail guns and the other weapons is just perfect. Uh, you can just tackle each piece separately and in any order, well, you got to do the inner frame first, but after that, you can do it pretty much any order you prefer. Um, I even did the build with putting the armor on first, then I dealt with the um, you know, in, in the side skirts, and then I dealt with the, the backpack and the weapons. So, so I'm definitely giving this an S because I, I can't imagine anything being better than this. I expect other MG extremes to be on par with this. Uh, this is just the second one, but, um, I can't imagine something could be better than this. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you for the next one. Thank you for watching this video right to the end. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. That does help out the channel. If you would like notifications as to when new videos are posted to this channel, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you do have time, please do enjoy one of the videos that are popping up around my head.